Right, bro. Um, so as you know, our Copa is around uh, male mental health and our bigger Copa, which is often up, bro. Um, and a lot has been done, I guess, in regarding uh, speaking around like the society's expectations, like what well, society say you should be this, you should be this, I mean, shouldn't do this and all this stuff. But where do you think inside that discussion is our responsibility as men to our own mental health and what we need to do to change for ourselves? That makes sense. <laughs> Whew. What a question. <laughs> well, uh, I think part and parcel is like what you've just said, eh? Like, mm. it's just, it's so difficult to kind of find yourself when there's so many different methods that we're being told, you know? Whether that's breath work for some, working mm. out for others, reading for others, yep. ice baths, jiu-jitsu, yep. <laughs> crossfit, um, you know? It's taking time alone, mm. being intentional. Yeah. Like I've seen a lot of ideas being thrown around and, and they're all good. They yep. all hold value. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think it really comes down to finding your own groove with things. Yeah, yeah. You know, like we live in like busy times, right? Yep. So <clears throat> for some guys, you know, working out as much as others or doing yeah, certain yeah. things, it's just, it's just not, you add fatherhood to that. Yeah. How, how hard it is to cost a living and like things just can get quite cloudy and busy. So yeah, I used to kind of be like, you should mm. do this, this and that as yeah. I've become a father and become busier and things yeah, have got bro, a little yeah, bit yeah. harder. Yeah. I've had to kind of learn to just kind of sit with things a little bit more and yeah, just yeah. be comfortable with not figuring them out as fast yeah. as I maybe have wanted to. So yeah, I don't bro. know if I have an answer for that, bro. Yeah, no, I, I think I, you, have answered it, bro, in, a, in the sense of being more patient, patient with ourselves, and because um, as you say, bro, there's a lot of stuff out there which makes people think, oh, they have to be doing something, mm. they have to be working out, they have to be journaling, they have to be doing 10-minute meditation sessions. Those are all fine, but as you put it, bro, like really finding what works for you and what can you can fit in. Like it might be five minutes in the day, it might be a whole hour dedicated to that, but yeah. don't be so caught up in seeing others. Like, mm. Oh, you're sweet. Hems is doing this. George is doing this, I have to do the same. Like it's really like, oh, this is oh. what I can do, eh? Like social media, like that's what we're trying to do here, but like you know that you have a presence and a profile. Has it been hard trying to manage that? Like your profile, who you are, what you want to share, what you don't want to share. Has that impacted you in any way? Oh, well, of course. Social media is impacting all of us, eh, constantly. Mm. Yeah. I think, um, and yeah, it's it's something that we always have to be aware of. Uh, you know, I've just learned from making mistakes, you know. Sometimes yeah. in this age of information and disinformation, mm. probably mm. more importantly, yeah. it's okay. Sometimes it's okay that sometimes we we put things out there as we're trying to yeah. process and yeah, we're trying yeah. to figure out what our truth is and yeah. what the truth is. Yeah. And, what I've just learned is you just get you just get better at knowing when like is this something I need to process yeah, in front yeah, of people? Yeah, 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 yeah. Or is this something I need to process on my own? Or yeah. you know, what I'm seeing with a lot of you know, you wanna say youth, but everyone's experiencing this. Mm. Like even even us older ad adults and o older folk who have had to deal with social media is, mm. is it's often easier to or sometimes you can see it as easier to go and process things that you're feeling inside mm. in front of others on a, on a platform where maybe you want to hear that someone agrees with you. Um, it's harder to go to your brother mm. or your sister or your friend or your parent or someone in your circle and go, hey, there's these, there's these things that I want to say, there's these things that I'm thinking, like, what do you think? And, and, and more so what I'm realizing is not everyone has a good soundboard mm. to, to process those thoughts with. I think, in mental health and particularly in relation to social media, uh, I think sometimes we, we, we think it's that simple from A to B for people and it's, it's really not. Like, you know, some people come from different environments, you know, they're dealing with different trauma or whatever and, you know, they don't have that. So for me, I've just had to learn from making mistakes mm. and often the kind of the idea that I have in my head is is this something I, I am okay with processing out loud? Yeah, or yep. do I need to process it within first? Because personally it's boring, eh? Mm. Like if you actually are trying to figure something out and you actually, uh, and you have the, 
knowledge to be able to be self-critical, it's kind of like boring. Like it's like okay, still with myself. Mm. There's you know, there's no um, there's no clout there. Yeah, no, nah, there's you know? a bro. There's no hype there. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but also you know, yeah. it's very human of us to 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 want. I don't know if the word's clout, but to go and process online because it's dopamine, right? Yeah, yeah. We all know that the yeah. same the same dopamine levels we feel online are the same as some drugs and stuff like mm. that, you know? So mm. it's, yeah, I don't have an answer, but I just try and always ask myself, like, what's the intention here? Yeah. Is the intention for someone to, yeah. to affirm me that I can't get from my immediate circle? And is that an issue? And that's just come from making mistakes. Yeah. yeah. No, 100, bro. And, like, I think that's a good point around figuring out does posting this thing, like, who does that serve? Mm. Like, does that serve my ego? Does that serve someone else who may have the same experience? Or does that serve um, something that's true to you? But you're right, bro, like, there's a, there's a big pressure just to post stuff just because it's relevant, just because it's topical. Mm. Oh, yo, something just came out, I need to share an opinion on it because, it, because it's topical. But yeah. really understanding, like, actually, is this who I am? Is this something that I need to go um, think about on my own? And is it something I even share at all? Like, that's yeah. another thing, like actually being quiet on, on something can be just as fine. 100%. Mm. What do you reckon is like <laughs> bad mental health advice? My one's probably, uh, and this is, don't, don't quote me on this, but my one's probably around therapy, eh? Like, Tell me, bro. Like I think Talk it's, I think it's a real. Uh, it definitely helps when you find a good therapist. It's game changing. Mm. But to kind of like throw it out, this there's this kind of like this idea of like go to therapy or, yep. you know, it's such a privileged position to bro, think someone can, yeah. first of all, afford it. Yeah. First of all, that's the only way. That's it's one hundred percent a way to heal, like and, and help people. But I, yep. I think we need to. I would prefer to see resource put into, um, I don't know, public resourcing around mm. good prompting questions to ask mm. your friends. How to hold um, space. How to hold space. Mm. So that we're all learning and we're all potentially um, gaining knowledge in how to hold space and show yeah, you know? yeah. And you're right, bro. Like, I think that is therapy. Like, it's a great thing when, it's, when you can afford it, when you can um, put time and invest into it. But there's no way that everyone that needs help mentally mm. can be seen by 100%. a therapist. There's way too many. But we do have our own whanau, we have our own bros, we have uh, people in our side of our circles that can do that for us. Yeah. So yeah, I think the therapy thing gets tossed around too easily. Like, oh, just go to therapy, bro. I'm like, oh, sure, can't afford it, <laughs> yeah. whatever. But really, how can we invest in ourselves to, to do that for ourselves? And like, but there are cases where we need to do that, and oh, that's 100. fine, but they're not as often, as frequent as the ones that we're seeing just within our bros. Yeah, I think yeah. that's just, it's just kind of thrown out as the idea, but I think mm. it needs to be part of yeah something bigger, bro. The one of the branches to yeah, yeah, this yeah. tree that we're all trying to yeah. fix the mental health of. <coughs> one twenty. <laughs> bro, I know that we um when I spoke on the phone, we were talking about like stuff you could bring, Buzzy for Cardo. What is some of the, have you thought of any more Buzzy Fakaro? Any Buzzy thoughts around mental health then? Buzzy Fakaro. I'll be honest bro, I'm, only, I'm doing this chat because we're bros, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, I thought about it too, like, yeah. obviously we come and we, we film and the idea here is that mm. um, trying to normalise a conversation like this because yeah. it is very normal. I think the reason why this works is because we have these chats, right? Yeah. And like, yeah. when we catch up, there's nothing we're very lucky and privileged in the sense of our friendship where yeah. we'll come work out together but yeah. we'll actually we've unpacked a little bit about fatherhood, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe society, yeah. you know, what we think and yeah. politics, whatever. Yeah, yeah, I think a lot of the time we might not get to like a super buzzy thought. Yeah. But what's what's special is like I guess we have uh, have the privilege of having access to uh, not just this friendship, but I'm sure yeah. you and other spaces yeah. too, where this yeah. is normal. Yeah. My, my thing, like, my whakaro at the moment is like, arm's length. Mm. That's my, that's my one thought that I've been thinking about recently, which is, anything outside of arm's length for me is an overextension. Um, and that's probably happened... So uh, like through, in people in space? Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, since fatherhood, becoming mm. a dad a few years ago, mm. 
um, mahi picking up. You know, there, there's such an urge to want to help everyone, and that's awesome. But for me, um, what's important for me is that I don't want to overextend myself, and uh, the closest relationships to me mm. feel like they see more vulnerability or more showing up outside of what's just here. And I think it's, it's harder with the people around you, right? Mm. The people closest to you because they see you the most. Mm. But for me, I just decided in probably the last couple of years that it really needs to be arm's length for mm. me. Yeah. And if I live a life at arm's length um, and I try my hardest to not just for, to help um, others, but to allow myself to be helped by people at arm's length. Mm. Um, and we have that kind of ecosystem of yeah, well-being yeah. To, yeah, yeah. toward each other. Yeah. Um, that's enough for me. Very hard. Mm. Yeah, and I think you're right in terms of like, it's quite easy to fall into the yes mm. cycle. It's just like, yeah, bro, I got you helping others, putting your time into other for other people, mm. and then the ones closest to your heart uh, mm. end up missing out on you because of it. Oh, definitely. Yeah, but yeah, you're right, bro. Like just being, and that's hard. I think that's probably a hard thing for people to admit. It's like actually have to say no here, or I have to back mm. away from this copepa because it's taking time away from the people you know you held close to your heart. Mm. But yeah, um, and even just our, the point around you and I, hey, this is quite normal for us when we meet up, we do a session and we still catch up. And we don't yeah. small talk either. No, we don't. We don't. Yeah. How are you? Like, no, nah, no, nah, we just no. kind of cut into it. What would, what would your advice be if the bros watching this were like, oh, how can we do that? How can we hold space the way George and Hems do? Yeah. The bros are funny, eh? <laughs> <laughs> bros are funny because yes. there's a... Uh, we're so passive. Yeah, yeah. But so much is being communicated. Mm. and our passiveness, whether it's mocking, whether it's, even all of our like our slang, right, is geared towards yeah. um, hiding our true intent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, the man, yeah. you're the man. Yeah. Or like, those guys, like yeah. all of it's like really Shush. language, <laughs> language to help us hide, right? Mm. And I think, man, nothing's easy about what you just asked me. Mm. I, I think, I think if, like, humor is a currency in our, in our relationships. It's how we get ahead. It's how we hide. Yeah. But I honestly think stating, like, what, like, okay, the biggest one is, like, for those of us who love an inu, right? But we, for some of us, we'll decide at some point, I can't keep doing this. But what we'll do is we'll say everything but I'd like to improve myself. I'd like to improve my relationships. I'd like to be a better father. I'd like to be a better partner. I'd like to be able to show up for myself better. But what we'll do is like, oh, nah, G, you're not coming. Or, um, oh, sorry, bro, missed it. Like, we'll do everything but actually just tell our bros, I'd actually like to be a better person. And just at the moment, in this space and season or time, mm. I can't, like, mm. get on it. Mm. I'm going to get, like, maybe summer or, like, maybe another birthday or when I can show up better for myself, I'm going to be there. But we can't, what we kind of do is we kind of go, oh, I've got something on. And then you say that 10 times and the bros are starting to go like, Bree. you know, it's like, and there's not, and it's hard. That's the thing, right? It's, it's, sometimes it's just hard to actually say, um, I'm trying to help myself. Mm. And it would be mean if yous could help me. Mm. But if all yous can do for now is just like not make me feel stink if I don't come to things, mean, mm. you know? And I think, I think um, in my experience, um, none of the bros, if you actually ask to want to show up for yourself, and you actually state that that's what yeah. it is, none of them actually are on that buzz of like, mm. yeah, what a rude dude. Yep. And if they are, then we all know what to do. Eh? Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's the biggest part of like why Soften Up Bros is here, is because we're like, that fear that's stopping us from making the jump, it's real. Mm. But it's also understand that on the other side of it is, is love, you know, there's, there's understanding. One quarter watch that you shared that night, I'm not sure if you can remember it, was about being proud of our scars. <laughs> remember that chat? Yeah. <laughs> Do you want it like, because I've always, that, I, that's one, one thing I walked away with that evening, but could you tell us more around that cope by and kind of that message, I guess? Yeah, the proud of your scars chat is, I think a lot of men, when they experience trauma, 
Sometimes we're like, it's the only way to be, sometimes the only way we seem to look at it is as, as if it's something ugly. Mm. Uh, when a lot of the time, uh, it's been stuff out of our control, it's been stuff through the way we were raised, mm. whether that's abuse, whether that's environment. And I think there, there, there has to come a point when, um, you know, you have to look at those things as something that's actually beautiful, you know? Mm. And the only reason why I say that is because I've actually had heaps of chats like this with my mates and being able to affirm them and, mm. and, and to say, or to even say like, bro, there's no way I could go through something like that. It's like, there's no way I could survive something like that, you know? Mm. And to actually, and to look at their calluses as, as something that they can grow on and they can mm. move past. Mm. Um, but if you're always looking at them at something like that is just ugly or something that uh, you know, can't be transformed or yeah. into some kind of something else, mm. then I just, yeah, I think it's just a different way of looking at it. Mm. Maybe, maybe the other side of that caught it all around, I think sometimes we get romanticised by our struggle. Uh, sometimes yeah. I feel like, I don't know, some of the, you know, oh, bro, I've had this, I've done this, this has happened, and those things are all well and true for everyone exper everyone's experience, but don't let that become your defining cordial. Like don't Absolutely. let that be, yo, see, this is, I am my scars. You can still take those things with you, take your scars, your internal things that you've earned, and then make them mm. mean what they are today. The hardest thing about this chat is, that's why holding space is so important. Bro, and I, like, there's some trigger terms that we use that I struggle with, eh, because they're, they're overused so much that they sometimes lose power, but holding mm. space is like, I've seen the power of it. Like, mm. for example, I was at a, I was at a catch up and I have, I have a bro who is the most stellar husband, stellar human being, stellar friend. Like he is just five stars all around. And I'm not even gassing him up. Like I know that, but mm. he talked about how he's never, he had an abusive father. Um, and he said that there's, he never forgets like the fear mm, that feeling that he was raised in and as we held space for him we were able to affirm the fear out of him because the fear is that i'll always be at some point i have to live so perfectly mm. i have to do things so correctly because if i don't okay i'll become my dad wow. and ho what holding space did was it allowed us to say, bro, I've been with you in this moment mm. for these many years, and I've seen the kind of man that you are, and it's gonna be okay. And like, he was able to, he was able to come out of that. But what I, I say that to say this, that if for bros that are hearing this chat and us telling them, you know, they gotta see that, you know, it's being romanticized and mm. they're, 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 they're a lot more than just what happened to them. It, mm. it also needs the holding of space. Because huh? men, 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 yeah. men need to be able to yeah. sit in it a lot more than just watching us talk about it. You know what I mean? <laughs> but Yo. that's also why we're doing this. Yeah. No, 100 bro. I want to do the set and I'll come back to this point. That's bullshit. I always look at it like the best that we'll be able to do is like potentially give people a moment, just enough time for them just to catch a breath. Mm. Like so much can be done and just someone giving you space just to catch a breath. Like you might you might come to come into a moment of realization. But you couldn't get to that because you were holding so much, right? Mm. So I feel like everything that this conversation maybe, maybe it won't, or the the work that you guys do is all about just people need so little to do so much for themselves. Yeah. Like, and that's, that's what excites way. me, yeah, yeah, that's what excites me about yeah. what you guys are doing and, and what's needed to happen in this space. Like, um, people are so capable. I think we need to talk to people like they're capable, mm. like they can really do things for themselves and that, and, and that way we won't overextend ourselves. Yeah. Because, yeah. yeah, I think that's why a lot of people that are in this space uh, get burnt out yeah. and then they quit and then they become cynical. Yeah. <laughs> I've been there, yeah. you know what I mean? And yeah. then you're just like, fuck the world, yeah. you know? Like, yeah. 
go sort it out yourself. Yeah, yeah. And I'm tired of shit. Yeah, yeah, but that's yeah, that's yeah. I I, I, I just want to say to to people that are in this space, mm. like, please look after yourselves. Yes. It's very hard money, you know. Yeah, bro. It is. So important. Though. There's one thing. All you. Fold. All you. <laughs> nice. I got a question for you, man. Um, <laughs> Don't expose me. <laughs> a lot of a lot of this, you know, um, is about normalizing or mm. like showing what it can look like. Yeah. What What's some good leading questions for you when you go to your bros mm. and you're trying to check in, right? Or some cues that you look for or that you try to bring up. Bro, I think maybe even prior to getting into actual session with the bros, just. Um, one, check yourself. Mm -hmm. I think that's a big one, like, because knowing that whatever you step in with will come out if you're mm -hmm. in that space with the bro. But once you get to there and you're actually in the conversation with the bro, um, it's more listening, eh? Yeah. As opposed to like, bro, I yeah. heard about this, tell me. <laughs> like, it just, it's quite confronting yeah. for, for the bro to do that. So, true, G, like, mm -hmm. you know, tell me what's going on. Like, oh, bro, you know, and it, usually the bros will kind of hang around there. Nah, it's all good, just mahi busy. I'm like, oh, yeah. But what else? Yeah. <laughs> and kind of just, it'll take some time and, and the, whatever comes more natural to you and your bro, like use those words, use those questions. But um, it really is like you have to be present eh? mm. Like you can't be, you can't try to jump to the issue. Because usually when you try to jump to the issue, you're trying to jump to the solution. If you listen and they don't tell you mm. and you leave it there, dap them up, hug mm. them. Mm. They still leave with, they checked on me. Mm. I wasn't ready to tell them, you know, but they checked on me. Mm. And I've known in my, in my life, like, um, we, when I've thought about people that checked on me, we didn't actually get to a solution, but it's just what I needed at the time. Mm. Just someone to go, <coughs> if you, if, if, if you want to go there, you know, we can, mm. but if not, like, I, ch I checked up. And so, yeah. you're so right, Listen, listening is yeah. important there. I think it's a real male thing too. Yeah. Oh, true, bro. Like, grab the hammer, put Hell the nail yeah. in, fix it up, boom, <laughs> done. But uh, yeah. we need to be able to just sit there and be like, quite awkward. Mm. It is awkward, but that's what we're there for. We're here for an awkward, a revealing and open time with the bro. And then once you get there, they, they should be able to come to you with anything. Mm. <laughs> and yeah. same for you to them as well. Mm. Follow up question What's something that um, you're going through at the moment that. Ah! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're trying to figure out. Um, you know, because you know what it is? We like, you watch these things and it's like, we, uh, we're not even trying to come across, we yeah. obviously know we don't know the answers. Yeah, yeah. But I'm interested, since we are catching um, up, we haven't caught up in a while. What's something that yeah, maybe it's like, just like you're trying to figure out at the moment? Um, I think one thing I've, I've kind of learned over this year, and maybe because of, of my studies, I'm at, so I'm doing clinical psychology at the moment, is like how often anxiety came up for me. <laughs> Bro, I didn't realise how common it was. Like, like what, what spaces? Like what scenarios? Like um, Kopapa stuff, bro. So, mm. Like because we're like a Kopapa kid, grew up doing Kopapa and stuff. Like leading into stuff, like it come up, and I just thought like, oh, this is just a normal response, and maybe it is normal. But like I'm like, damn, like looking at the symptoms and looking what I went through, and I was like, I think I got anxieties around that one thing mm. around that one time. So just the f the thing. What's for the me core? That, what was the core emotion behind it though? Um, fear of failure, bro. Mm. That's what popped up, eh? I was like, okay, so he has to be perfect, has to do all these things, has to like mm. crack it. I can't be seen to, you know, to fail in any regard. Mm. And then um, that kind of made me real, kind of freeze up in a way. Mm. So it froze up, couldn't, couldn't really uh, mobilize the way I wanted to. I did get through it and all, and it still pops up now and then, but now I'm at a point where I can recognize it, like, gee, that's anxiety. You have an anxiety for this thing. Mm. It's okay, you need to go back to your um, protocols you need to go back to your your tikanga to help help you through that so for my brothers and i we come as like a package deal and so if my brothers are uh, you know hitting a certain standard often mm. i feel the same too mm. and i think that's probably exists for the three of us um but then understanding that i am both a tripler and hear me at the mm. same time like so i can do all these things that i want to you know what 100%. i believe is my standard but then 100%. also contribute to what is this package of, of tripletness but um, yeah, but trying to understand that, yeah. bro, like, okay, sweet G, but you're not still that little kid. You're yeah. not him anymore. Um, you, so you can be all these things that you want to be and still be a triplet and still fail, and that's all right. I'm going to throw those questions back at you. <laughs> <laughs> trying to move the song quite fast, hey. aren't you? <laughs> 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 Bro's like, oh, you're sweet. I'm just going to have digs at heavy. 
Nah, fair enough, bro. Nah, we'll <laughs> um, what's any, as much as you want to share, what stuff that you think has come, come up for you? Uh, one for me is fatherhood's probably been a big one at the moment. Mm. Um, and you're a, you're a new papa too, mm. and there's just days eh, where you just finish and you're just like, fuck, that was rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> not, the, not the iPad for like four yeah. hours, you know, like just like I oh, uh, could be better than that one. Try hundred percent, you know. Mm. And I think I think for me, uh, because I've had a good dad mm. and I've I've been able to the privilege of having fatherhood modelled for me. Yeah, I have some kind of idea of yeah. the father that I want to be, yeah. and when I don't hit that. Um, it, it gets a little bit discouraging. Mm. Um, but just learning to, in the best way, kids, kid, my son has been a level of accountability to myself that I've needed. Because um, you just cut, they just, every day they just look at you and basically you're saying like, whatever, <laughs> you're like, you're a liar. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like... They you think you're slick. Like, there's times, <laughs> there's times when my son is like tapping me on the knee, and I, and I have to like. He's like, said my name like mm. four times, mm. and like, why wasn't it the first time? Mm. And it's okay. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, we are occup Parenting is hard. You're occupied. You're doing mm. things, but just for me, it's it's just been a real. Uh, it's been exposing. Mm. Yeah, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's been exposing for me. And but it's growing in the too best way. way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. and just like, th you know, you think you know like so much and then mm. parenthood comes along yeah, and you're just like, I know. I want to know it. nothing. Yeah. Because I, because <laughs> I'm, you know, you're, you're learning. Mm. But yeah, for me, that would be, that would be my big one. So you talked around like how, like how to hold space in a good way. <laughs> Have you ever had a time where you went to go like hold space or share something? With someone holding space and it just ain't work out, like oh, like, bro, can you tell us? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, KG, I'm coming with us. And, uh, I don't remember like before. specific, but yeah. it's it's exactly what we talked about before. Like yeah. when you when you when you assume that my brother needs me to check on him and he needs the solutions that I'm gonna present for him, that's really <laughs> that's really bad. Mm. And I've actually found holding space when you're trying to show up for someone else, so much can be learned from what they communicate. Mm. So like the transaction is often like, oh, my bro's struggling. Mm. Uh, I've got to help you, you know? Like, but really if, if you come open to it and you listen, like you mm. said, so much learning is going both ways. Mm. And so, yeah, there's, it's just been times when, or even just like, sometimes I've probably been right but it wasn't <laughs> me that needed to say it, yeah. you know? Or like, sometimes the right thing being said isn't the right thing at all, mm. you know? Because, again, you've skipped a solution. Mm. Or again, you've, uh, you haven't listened, and whatever God, universe, whatever you guys believe, mm. was setting up for the right person to say it, yeah, yeah. you skipped the line. Because <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to be the man. Because you wanted to be like, <laughs> yeah, I did that. That's is that often nah. that shush, um, you're the bro that kind of brings that cordial? Mm. The, the, those truths, those, those truth bombs to bros, like how do, you, how do you do that and how do you look after them after you've said it? See, that's why I've come back to arm's length. Because yeah? <laughs> <laughs> man's was out here yeah. truth bombing and yeah. <laughs> I need to truth bomb myself. Yeah. Nah, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm lucky in the sense that the people close to my circle mm -hmm. um, have known me for a long time now and while I've got, I want to believe I've gotten a little bit better. Mm. That was always part of my DNA and my makeup. Like, it's, I'm just a real like. That's the elephant in the room. Like, why are we not talking about it? Like, yeah. it's huge. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, what's up? What's happening here? Yeah. Going, why is this or? Yeah. So there's my friends have become accustomed to, to me. But, and I, I think now, um, I'm trying to learn to. Instead of saying what I think, mm. how do we um, listen better, mm. you know? Like there's- Be more patient. Yeah, being yeah. right, so having the last word, mm. having the truth bomb, it's like, uh, it's becoming not my thing anymore, yeah. you know? What's your favorite post-workout meal? 
So swing to session, what are you gonna eat? <laughs> bro, bacon. <laughs> bro, I am the worst, bro. Yeah. Like, I feel like I like do a workout workers. and I'm like, takeaways. Like, I just <laughs> yeah. worked out to I treat myself. <laughs> and that's why yeah. I'm chubby cute. But, <laughs> nah, um. There ain't no shame yeah, to you. Yeah, like, like, like a, like a burger, eh? Yeah, yeah, burger and chips too hard. Yeah, I like that. Mm. I like that. Fast answers, very quick five questions. Okay. okay, you ready? Three, two, one. If you could have any superpower, what would it be? Uh, make food out of nothing. What's the most embarrassing thing that ever happened to you? Uh, crump battle at school. <laughs> what's, your favorite, what's, your, what's your favorite dance move? Uh, um, if you could trade places with anyone for the day, who would it be? Uh, no one. Uh, if you could only eat one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? Uh, rice. <laughs> what's your go-to karaoke song? Um, dilemma. That's a lie, I just said it. Go, keep going. Uh, Come if on. you could time travel, where would you go? Uh, 80s, 90s. Ah, I'm going to fall off. <laughs> uh, time travel? Yeah. Nice. Run a bit.